Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Michael Peterson. I just want to very briefly introduce uh, our next speaker, Full Swagel. We're very lucky to have him here. He's the 10th CBO director. And he's very gracious to join us because we gave him a whole seven days on the job to get settled in before asking him to come across town and come to our summit. So uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, I just want to say briefly how much we appreciate the Congressional Budget Office at the Foundation. I think it's one of the single most important institutions in our government. Uh, it's one of the few organizations left that continues to provide unbiased, non-political facts and information on which the Congress has to rely to, to do its work. And it's very well respected on both sides. And they're just forced to deal with whatever projections you put out. And, and that's the whole point, is to give them a real set of information to work from. So I think it's invaluable in almost every piece of the legislation that affects the budget. So without further ado, Phil, we're very glad to have you. Thanks for being here. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks, Michael. Thanks, for, thanks very much. I, I really appreciate it. I can't think of a better and more appropriate place for me to start um, uh, in, in public than uh, here at the Fiscal Summit with the Peterson Foundation. Um, so as Michael said, this is my second week at, uh, at CBO, and I I'm excited to, ha to have the opportunity to lead this extraordinary institution, which as Michael said, does such important work in support of the Congress as it grapples with the, the budgetary and economic issues facing the nation. I, I have to tell you that my excitement in some ways is, is tempered because my appointment was announced just one day after the passing of CBO's founding director, Alice Rivlin of, of Blessed Memory, who, who led the CBO from 1975 to 1983. Um, uh, with, with vision, with wisdom, with determination, she established the agency structure, formulated procedures, standards, goals that have guided it, have guided us for more than four decades. Um, and above all, she forged a commitment to providing information that would help the Congress make effective budget and economic policy. Um, in a memo to the staff, this to the CBO staff in 1976, at the start of the agency's first full year of operation, she wrote, quote, CBO must be and must be perceived to be an objective, nonpartisan, professional organization in the service of the Congress. And then she went on, our work and our publications must always be balanced, thorough, and free of any partisan tinge. We still give that memo to every employee, every new employee at CBO. I, I got it on my first day. My, my University of Maryland colleague, Phil Joyce, has written a, a book about CBO. Um, and, and he wrote that several decisions Alice made in the agency's first year became crucial to its ability to perform um, as she had envisioned. Um, I'll just list a few of those. She selected staff who could perform in a nonpartisan manner. She organized the agency so it would undertake longer-term policy analysis work in addition to the short-term budget work. Most importantly, according to Phil Joyce, she decided that CBO would not make policy recommendations to avoid aligning the agency with one side or, or the other and, and to avoid being viewed as, as partisan. Um, all of this seems natural today to think about CBO, but it's all because of the decisions that Alice made at the very beginning. <clears throat> There's a memorial for Alice at Georgetown University in a few weeks, in a, a Friday in a, in a few weeks. Um, I suspect there'll be plenty of stories uh, about her. I've, I've heard a few of them since I started, but there's really uh, amazing stories. Um, so my goal at CBO is, of course, to live up to the standards that, that she set for the office, working with CBO's superb, superb staff, some of whom are, are here today, to provide objective analyses in support of the Congress and on behalf of the American people. We maintain that objectivity in a number of ways. So again, I'm going to list some of them now. We continue to make no policy recommendations because choices about public policy inevitably involve value judgments that the agency does not and should not make. Right? So we, we focus on the positive and not on the normative. We continue to hire people on the basis of their expertise and without regard to pol political affiliation. And we continue to enforce strict rules that prevent employees from having financial conflicts of interest and that limit their political activities. 
when we hire people, we, we carefully consider whether they can perform objective analysis regardless of their own personal views. And as many of you know, we continue to draw on the knowledge and insight of experts both inside and outside the government, representing a variety of views on the subjects at hand. And just looking around the room, I know many of you um, are, are these counterparties. Many of you are the people we, we have spoken to. Um, now, of course, although CBO draws on many, many outside experts, our findings are based on our own assessments, and we are solely responsible for them. So if, if anyone has concerns about any of CBO's analyses, please let me know. None. Great. <laughs> We're set. It's going to be a good, good term. Um, no, that's a kid. Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, uh, sometimes CBO's findings make people on one side or another of an issue unhappy, and, and sometimes on both sides. Now, that hasn't happened to me yet, but I know the day will come. Um, uh, from time to time, the Washington Post has described CBO's job as being the, the quote, skunk at the congressional party. Now, um, following a long-standing tradition, my office, which is, is pretty empty right now, um, has a stuffed skunk, which was given to me by the wonderful CBO staff on my first day on the job. Um, I have to admit, I'm waiting with some trepidation to learn about other CBO traditions. Um, uh, many CBO directors, Previous directors had such a furry critter. I suspect Dan uh, had one as well. And from time to time, had to fulfill, fulfill the role described by the post. I, I can promise you that we will continue to call the issues as we see them, based on careful analysis, regardless of the political ramifications. Now, that political, that careful, objective work does not serve its full purpose unless people understand what we've done how we've done it, which data and analytical tools we've used, and what key factors drive our estimates. So transparency about our estimates and analyses has been and will continue to be a top priority for CBO. We've made great strides in recent years under the leadership of my distinguished predecessors, and particularly in the past four years under Keith Hall. So we have three goals related to transparency. To promote a thorough understanding of our, our analyses, through accessible, clear, and detailed communication to help people gauge how our estimates might change if policies or circumstances differ, and to enhance the credibility of our analyses and processes by showing their connections to data, to research, to feedback from experts. And we recognize that that credibility is important on a day-to-day -day basis, and is especially critical when important policy decisions are being made on the basis of our work. We undertake a variety of activities to accomplish these goals. Let me mention just a, a few of them. Um, of course, we testify our, about our projections and our analytical methods. We respond to questions from members of Congress. Several, several of my colleagues testified exactly um, in, in that way the week before I started uh, at CBO. We publish reports and other documents explaining our analyses to both general audiences and technical audiences. And nearly every cost estimate includes a section describing the basis for the estimate. Um, and, and if you look at the cost estimates on our website, you'll see that the format has been updated to, to highlight the key parameters. We put out computer code for some of our models, uh, such as our new health insurance simulation model. And we provide files of the data underlying the analyses, both in major reports and, and other studies. All of this is on our website. Um, we analyze the accuracy of our uh, estimates. We publish reports on accuracy on our, we on our uh, websites. And we regularly compare the, the uh, estimates and projections from CBO with those of other organizations when available. <clears throat> and probably most importantly, CBO staff members communicate every day with people outside the agency. Most importantly, of course, with, with others on Capitol Hill to explain our findings and our methods and, and to get feedback. Now, are our met estimates and analyses always right? Well, of course not. Um, I think everyone knows the adage, it's, it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. Um, we work hard to ensure that our analyses are timely, thorough, and nonpartisan. They incorporate the best possible information, and that they generally reflect the middle of a range of most likely outcomes, and that they and the basis for them are presented clearly and explained clearly. I'm going to focus, in, in my term, on what more we can do to, to further this 
uh, and, and to make our analyses both transparent and, um, and easily uh, accessible. Um, one thing we're doing new already is that we're providing Congress and the public with more information about what we're working on through a new quarterly snapshot of our work in progress, both on our analytic reports and our cost estimates. The first update was posted on our website last Wednesday, and we'll continue to post this update uh, once a quarter. Okay, now having said all this about transparency, it's important for, for me to note that some of the signif significant work of the CBO is not and cannot be public while it's underway. So CBO routinely works with congressional committees and leaders to provide information and analysis uh, when, lawmaker, when lawmakers are evaluating alternative proposals but have not yet made specific proposals public. In such circumstances, confidentiality is critical to the legislative process. Right? Committees need the flexibility to modify their proposals before making them public. I, I've heard from many um, current and former uh, Hill staff that this is a, a, a key role of, uh, of the CBO. Uh, the existence of such work in progress is provided equitably to the majority and minority in both chambers and is kept confidential. Of course, once a pu proposal becomes public, CBO makes its estimates for that version of the legislation publicly available. I am thinking careful, carefully about which potential steps are valuable and informative and which may have less value in terms of increasing our transparency. I want to focus on substantive transparency, uh, and that, that's what I'm, I'm focused on, how, how we can be substantively more, more transparent. And of course, we have to constantly balance our transparency efforts with our commitment to respond quickly to con congressional needs and with our professional responsibility to release reports and estimates only when they reach sufficient quality. We welcome your feedback about what you find most helpful, as well as suggestions for other ways we can provide useful information about our work. I'm not going to make my joke again about uh, no, no, no suggestions. All right. Um, so I'm new at CBO, but I have long been an admirer of CBO's work. While working in academia for the past 10 years, before that in, in several government positions, I relied on CBO's high quality analyses on many subjects. Um, the agency provides authoritative analysis, responsive and informative estimates of the cost of proposed legislation, and we do this because of the dedicated work and the deep expertise of the analytical staff. Again, some of them, many of them are here. Um, I, I've been at the agency a week, and in, it's just an incredibly impressive pl place. Um, uh, it's, it's really awe-inspiring. Um, and, and I should note that the work um, is also made possible by a talented group of colleagues who develop and maintain the agency's information technology systems and carry out essential functions in human resources and accounting, um, keep us safe, uh, and, and, and much more. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I, I already after a week, I have deep appreciation for the excellence and dedication of the people at, uh, at CBO. Um, it, it's a great privilege to be the person to perpetuate Alice L Rivlin's legacy uh, by joining such a terrific group of people in providing Congress with objective and impartial analyses. I look forward to learning much more from them and also from, from all of you. Thanks very much. Thank you.